Hello everybody, it is Sunday here, so it's not your typical Mother's Day. We went tubing today and we're getting ready to grill some steaks out on the grill for dinner. These are the Summer's Organic, 100% um, organic ribeye steaks from Trader Joe's, a little bit healthier. We only need three tonight. This one will go up and I will have a lunch or something with it. Um, I have some potatoes here and I have some broccoli. So what's going to happen is these are going to go on the grill. These are going in the microwave. That's the quickest way I can get these done tonight. It's completely fine. And then the broccoli will also be steamed in the microwave. Remember what I said before, all you have to do is add a few inches of water, put a lid on it or cover it with plastic wrap, give it about five minutes in the microwave, your broccoli will be steamed. You only need about an inch or two of water in it though. So you know this is a very fast dinner this is a i want to say a 15 minute dinner um maybe a 20 minute dinner but it's super fast we just need some food and um this is our dinner tonight so i'm gonna get making it okay so we got four potatoes well we got three but they're big so i'm gonna put four and now um i'm gonna go get the grill heating up so for the steaks, um, the first thing I saw when I opened my refrigerator is the classic sauce. This is just the Star Fry sauce, and I put it over the steaks. It was the first one I saw. It's what I picked out. It tastes good, and the grill is now lit, and the potatoes are still cooking away, and in just a couple minutes, I'll get these on the grill. Okay, the steaks are on, and see, I know some people be, might judge, but my little grill is still killing it and I'm very very happy about that I didn't add a ton of charcoal um, because all we're doing is putting the steaks on I'm not grilling anything else but they're gonna cook away a couple minutes per side and um, I'm gonna go get the broccoli in the microwave okay so I just flipped them over those look good don't they they will be good Okay, so the steaks are done, as is the baked potatoes and the broccoli. This is our 15-minute dinner for Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. This um, is a very, very simple dinner that is going to be delicious. And, um, you know, we totally could have went out tonight, but Scott and I went out a little bit earlier and got sandwiches on the way to the tubing place. And um, really, I just didn't want to go back out. We're all tired but hungry, so this is our dinner. See you tomorrow. Hello, everybody. It is Monday here, and tonight for dinner, we're going to have some simple seared chicken breasts. These are from Trader Joe's. We're going to have a Dijon cream um, sauce that goes with the chicken breast. Um, I'm going to make some organic shells with cheddar for Scott and myself, and some asparagus. This is also um, from Trader Joe's. So, and so is the organic white shells and cheddar. Um, Jackson wanted some tater tots instead of the macaroni and cheese. I didn't think it would be that big of a problem to put some in the oven. So again, from Trader Joe's, I'm going to have a few tater tots and um, I'm going to make a very quick, simple dinner. I have simply just um, seasoned it up with some of the Mrs. Um, Dash roasted garlic and herb table blends. And this has all kinds of stuff in it from garlic to onion powder to um, dry bell pepper and black pepper and parsley and rosemary and basil and I just you know liberally put it on it with some salt and now I'm gonna put it in a in a hot skillet with some olive oil but I'm gonna turn the heat down pretty quick once um, I get some color on them So getting asparagus ready to either steam or sear or grill is really, really easy. Um, this asparagus actually looks really nice. So all you're going to do is hold your asparagus and let it break naturally, just like that. These can be saved, sorry, these can be saved for soup. And these are what you are going to eat. And asparagus is so delicious. So just break them right where they want to break. Just like that. They will break naturally 
or they should. Okay, and now I'm just gonna rinse them off and they'll be ready to cook, just that simple. Okay, for my asparagus, I melted about three tablespoons of butter. I'm just gonna sear them really quick. And over here, I have removed my chicken to a glass plate. And right here in the skillet, we have it on about four. And it's got, you know, the chicken and a little bit of the olive oil, all those delicious flavors. So I'm taking some white cooking wine, about a fourth of a cup. Cook it for just a minute or two, let the alcohol kind of taste kind of come out of it just a little bit. Then I'm going to take some Grey Poupon. This is just the Country Dijon. I'm going to take a couple tablespoons and put that right in. You don't have to be that precise with it. Then instead of heavy cream, I'm using some whole milk. If you have heavy cream, that would be great. You're going to add about three tablespoons of that. And then, oops, sorry. And then you're going to take some tarragon. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little tarragon in. Again, no precise amount. Just about a teaspoon. And I'm going to move my asparagus around a little bit. And then I'm going to mix this up. You see that sauce? It's going to be delicious. Might add a, just a drop more milk. It should be a little lighter in color. There we go. So I'm just going to leave that on low and let those flavors mingle. And when my asparagus is done and my mac and cheese, I will get everything plated up. But there's our sauce. Be sure to taste it. Tastes delicious. Okay. There's our sauce. So here is dinner, you guys. It took about 30 minutes to make. Super easy. We got the chicken over the asparagus with the Dijon cream sauce and tarragon kind of floating over it all. And then we got our little crocs of the white cheddar um, Trader Joe's mac and cheese. So that is a complete Trader Joe's dinner from the chicken to the asparagus um, to the mac and cheese. So that's dinner for Monday night. Hello everybody, it is Tuesday night here. We are having our good old baked tacos. It's mostly Trader Joe products. I have some Trader Joe um, extra lean Angus ground beef. Extra lean is great because baked tacos tend to get greasy if you're not careful. I have some of the Trader Joe taco shells that we are gonna bake. I also have some of the Trader Joe's light shredded three bleep, blah, 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 three blend cheese and I have some of the Trader Joe's baby bell peppers and um, I also have just a can of crushed tomatoes that I'm going to use. I won't use the whole can. I'll have to put some um, in a Tupperware container and I also have some pre-made taco seasoning because I am out and I haven't made any but I don't want a big complex dinner. I haven't been feeling that good so I don't want to be in the kitchen too long. This is a filling one you know, like one meal in a casserole and um, we just serve it up usually with some sour cream and some fruit. So super simple to make and I'm going to show my quick recipe. It changes like every time I make this, by the way. Sometimes I add refried beans. Tonight I'm not going to. Um, it changes. So um, basically what you see is what's going in the tacos and it's going to be delicious. So I'm thawing out um, the lean ground beef and I'm getting my my little baby bell pepper here um, cleaned up and getting it ready to um, put in with the ground beef. I'm going to cook this um, in with the ground beef. It's actually going to give it quite a sweet flavor and I'm using my Abundant Chef knives cut on the inside of the pepper. It's not as slick. You're not going to cut yourself um, as easy, but if you cut on this side, like, like so, 
a lot of times it's slippery and people have trouble, but if you just flip it over, it's so much easier. So just a little tip, and I'm just gonna do a small little dice um, on these. I found that these knives are so nice. I love them. I can't wait to share this giveaway with you either. This um, is going to go into the filling. You make the filling for baked tacos ahead of time. Then you fill up your taco shells, top them with cheese, and pop them in the oven. So it's a great weeknight dinner. It's a great dinner when you're in a hurry or you have, you know, something going on that night. It's great also to make for, you know, like a house full of kids, like a sleepover or maybe a graduation party. Um baked tacos are delicious and you could set a bunch of stuff like um you know little settings out like avocados tomatoes lettuce um bell peppers you could do a fajita party too and those are good but um baked tacos are my favorite way to eat tacos i don't like regular tacos i just don't but i definitely like baked and that makes me very happy because my son loves tacos, and um, I used to not make them as much because I just don't like regular tacos. But there's something about the shell whenever you bake them that, that makes me like it a lot more. So um, I make them probably once or well, probably once every two weeks, I would say. And tonight is the night. So I'm just running my little Abundant Chef knife right through the peppers, just chopping them up even smaller. Um, I don't like them to be too chunky. And um, they will cook right on in with the lean ground beef. You could also do these with turkey too. So I took the Trader Joe's um, organic stone ground yellow corn um, taco shells. I put them in my temptations. I get so many questions asked about this cookware. My mom got all this cookware for me. It is from QBC. It is the Temptations collection, just in case you're going to ask. I usually like the standalone taco shells that you can find at your regular grocery stores, but you can see even the ones that are not standalone do stack up in the casserole. I like to take the large backs together. So, you know, you got the smaller side and the larger side and if you just kind of match them up they will um, um, stand up together you can kind of see and um, you know this is ready now to fill these up So I added about a fourth of a cup of the crushed tomatoes and some taco seasoning. Now I'm not adding any water, I'm turning it on low. And I did use my potato masher to break up that beef a little bit better. Potato mashers work for so many different things. They are one of the best tools to have in your kitchen. And um, now it's time to fill in or fill up the tacos. 
So they're filled up with the meat mixture. We're just gonna add our cheese and get them in the oven. So we don't skimp on the cheese. We fill them up hearty with cheese. That's why these make such a filling meal. And you know, my family really doesn't mind that they're baked as long as they're getting tacos. So these are gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes until all that cheese is baked and everything is warmed through. Here is dinner, very, very simple and um, very family friendly and perfect for a weeknight. Hi everybody, it is Wednesday night here. Scott was really nice, picked up some Arby's. I started eating before I could record it, um, but um, this is just a beef brisket with some potato cakes. Um, my knee is hurting really, really badly tonight. And I didn't want to try to put a lot of weight on it by standing in the kitchen. And I just have been kind of laying around all day. So um, I took some medication. I don't want my stomach to get upset. So this is Wednesday night's dinner. Oh, and the boys got other things. But I'm just showing you mine. They're already eating. And um, I'm thankful to have just something tonight that I didn't have to make on my own. Hello everybody, tonight is Thursday, so Scott was being really kind, he didn't really want me to cook with my bummed out knee again, even though I planned on it, but so he actually brought home some chicken, some church's chicken, and some bread, and um, mashed potatoes and gravy, and some mac and cheese, so that is our very simple dinner tonight, we're just going to help ourselves, eat in front of the TV, and to have a relaxing night. I actually broke out the paper plates and these little trays to put them on so we wouldn't have a lot to clean up. So, very simple dinner. Delicious. Hello, everybody. It is Friday here. So, for dinner tonight, we are going to have um, Parmesan breaded um, pork chops. These are just boneless pork chops. And they're out on the cutting board. I have some zucchini right here that I'm going to make with um, a half an onion. I'll show you how I make that. Um, I also got out some of these pasta sides just so the boys would have plenty. I think everything else would be plenty, but I'm still making that just in case. I have about a half a bag of the Ein's All Natural um, Panko breadcrumbs. I have some fresh Parmesan grated right on up in um, the breadcrumb mixture. Right here I have two eggs, about a cup of milk. I'm just mixing it up. You don't need a special whisk, you just need a fork. and. Just mix that egg up in the milk. Did you guys hear Cooper just said, he's like, you're cooking your dinner and not mine. Um, that's our golden retriever, in case you're new here. He's laying on the other side of the island. And um, all I'm going to do is get these dipped into the egg, into the um, panko breadcrumbs and parmesan, put them on another plastic cutting board and then I'll start everything else right in and into the breadcrumbs or the breadcrumbs and cheese press it in yum it's gonna be amazing we'll probably double coat these but I want to get the first coat on each of them first straight into the eggs and into the panko and cheese. Okay, as you saw, I did double dip them, kind of. You know, once they had the first coat, I re-dipped them into the egg and then back into the panko and cheese. So those are ready, and um, I'm going to start getting these ready next. 
I've also got my skillet heating up on about seven, um, like medium high heat, and I'm using actual canola oil tonight. Um, I didn't think I would have enough of the coconut oil, or I probably would have tried that. Okay, so for the zucchini, I am going to leave the skins on. You don't always have to, but it doesn't hurt. I'm just going to take off the ends. And then I'm just going to cut right down the middle. Cut it again, and just do like a large dice on it. That's simple. And we love zucchini. Um, I'm actually going to sprinkle a few sesame seeds on this one. Um, once it's done cooking, but um, it's such a wonderful vegetable. You can grill it, and you can bake it, and you can fry it. Zucchini is one of my favorites. So have you guys seen my food prep video yet? It went up yesterday. Hopefully you have, and if you haven't, go check it out. It has a lot of great tips in it to help you keep your fruits and vegetables, um, you know, longer after you come home from the grocery store. I'm still using these Abundant Chef knives, um, and I will have a review and um, giveaway up this next week. So I'm going to take this half an onion that I have, I'm going to get the outer layer off. Just enough for this, and um, you know, Jackson will like a, a ton of onion. I'm just kind of doing a large dice on that too, chopping it up. Just running my knife through it a few times. that is ready. So, we have our onions and we have our zucchini. We're going to get the pork chops started first and then I will get these on the stove in just a second. So, I'm going to cook these in batches of three and I'm going to give them about three to four minutes per side. I just turned it down just a little bit more and I'm just going to let them cook all the way through. Okay, so I just flipped them over. Don't they look amazing? Look at those. So, you want to flip them over very carefully so you don't knock off all the panko and everything. I have some olive oil heating up in this pan for the zucchini. And I also have this pan heating up for those noodles that I'm going to make to go with it. So, um, I'm just going to keep cooking. So I removed the first batch from the pan and I am going to put these in a warm oven around 200 degrees just to keep them warm while I get the rest of the dinner ready. Okay, everything went in. Um, the um, zucchini and the onion. I'm using some more of this table blends and roasted garlic on top. I'm going to stir it in. But I've got it on high and I will turn it down in a few minutes, but I like to get quite a bit of color on the zucchini. Okay, it is looking amazing, the um, zucchini here. So, ooh, sorry, it's about done. I'm just going to add some sesame seeds. Sorry. And just kind of mix it up. And that is steamy. That is done. It looks amazing. And even the noodles back here are done. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't recommend these every night for a side on your dinners. But for a quick, you know, night, it's fine. And then I have the other three pork chops right there. So I'm going to get dinner plated up. Here is our Friday night dinner. We have that delicious 
panko and Parmesan pork chop with a side dish of the little noodles I made and the biggest helping ever of zucchini and onions. This is a delicious dinner. Doesn't take that much effort to make it and your family is sure to love it. This is our Friday night dinner. I'll see you guys tomorrow with the last dinner in this video. Hello everybody, it is Saturday here, so we have a trip coming up and I don't want to do a lot of cooking, I don't want a lot of leftovers, so tonight, which is Saturday, I am doing leftovers for dinner, you guys, it's not that fancy, got some leftover chicken, we got three of the breaded Parmesan pork chops, a big bowl of noodles, We've got um, mashed potatoes and gravy and mac and cheese. We got some bread. And I am going to make a quick little summer salad um, with tomatoes and a cucumber. And I'm going to use some of these pickled onions from the Mantry box. They're really good. And then I'll add just a little bit of probably my own vinegar and oil to it. And I'm just going to let my family come down here and pick something off the island for dinner. And they can warm it up in the microwave. Super, super easy.